There's a story on the front page of the graphic, and of course we carried it as well right here, uh, 3 News and TV3, about the Ghana Statistical Service coming out with some 7.3 million Ghanaians facing poverty. And of course on social media, uh, well, the contestation is about the regions that seem to be having um, some of the poorest individuals or categ categorized. So um, by way of the categorization, the unemployment contributes most to the multidimensional poverty index. So you look at the MPI result, it's indicating um, that the most multidimensional poverty index is pegging some 32.6 people to be multidimensionally very poor. Now, we, we are looking at a statistics coming from the service indicating for the number of Ghanaians who are poorly living or having poor living conditions of the population, we have a composite number of some 27.9%. Poor access to healthcare, 21%. And the lack of education, 17.18%. That's access. Nearly half, that's 43.8% of those in the multi-dimensional poverty experience severe poverty. And uh, we'll look at um, the numbers. And it's indicating, even though uh, we have over 900,000 in the Ashanti region, the argument is that they are very, they are very much populated. Um, how did we get here? It means that, as a state, we need to do more. Roland, how did we get here? We got here by virtue of the fact that the driver took a wrong turn and uh, the driver mates also aided the driver in taking a wrong turn. This is the Nana Ado Danko Kufado and his abled or disabled driver mate, Mahmoudou Baumia. Roland, we will surely get here when you have all the rates increasing at an alarming rate. We will surely get here. If your inflation rate once upon a time was at 54% and today is at 20 something percent, and you say we should applaud you, Roland, we will surely get here if your unemployment rate is 14% and increasing. We will surely get here if your exchange rate, one dollar to the city, is at 15.4 Ghana cities. We will surely get here if you have such high interest rates. We will surely get here if people's Capital is shrinking by the rate at which your currency is devalued. We will surely get here. So I'm even surprised that I, 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 I honestly even doubt those figures. I believe it's more than that. The figure should have been more. I, the figure should be this more than that. This is the Ghana Statistical Service. Yes, the I'm telling you. So from that statistic, what it means is that one out of every four people ordinarily are poor. The, 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 the figures they are giving us. And I'm telling you, it's even more than one out of every four. Because we go out there and we see the suffering. We see the hardship. We see how people are suffering. And it is largely as a result of the mismanagement of this economy. Simple as that. That is not to say that under the NDC we didn't have poor people. We will surely have poor people. But the rate at which the number of people are moved into the poverty bracket, then it tells you that there is something fundamentally wrong with the managers of this economy and how they are managing the economy. If you have the president who is clueless about the economy, and if you have the vice president who is supposed to direct the president, and the president tells us that he put him there because he's supposed to help him in managing the economy, and the vice president who tells us that there is money in this economy and there's money at the Bank of Ghana, and for him to now turn around and be singing a different song with the same mouth, of course, we will be moved into that poverty line. So there is no way out of this, but for the fact that this has been brought as a result of human mismanagement from this incompetent government that has mismanaged this country and this economy. It's as simple as ABC. You don't need rocket science to understand where we have got into. And you don't need rocket science to understand where we are going. If the managers of this economy are not changed as soon as possible, the 7.3 million people you are seeing who will soon get to 15 million people, not money, 15 million Ghanaians will be moved to the poverty line. And I'm telling you that this 7.3 million, the, the people in this country have been moved to their poverty line are more than 7.3 million.
I can tell you that on authority. No, 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 no. There was a recent World Bank report which indicated that we had in excess of 1 million people, almost 1.5 million, we're told, moved um, into the poverty bracket. Mm. And you know that the argument from government is that, well, the, the world saw COVID and subsequently Russia and Ukraine. And so <laughs> if we have the World Bank reports indicating that from 800,000, we now 1.5 million. Our statistical service is indicating 7.3 million Ghanaians face poverty in various categories or forms. Um, perhaps the exogenous factors could be an attribute, not solely blaming government. Could that be a good argument? Roland, thank you. But you've spoken a lot of English. Yeah, true. Uh, <laughs> poverty <I> is poverty. <laughs> we don't have categories. No semantics. I mean, yeah. You can't feed, you can't feed. Oh, here you are. Oh, here you are. Let's not embellish. embellish the whole thing. We need to deal with the matter. 7.3 million people, 7.3 million of our brothers, of our sisters, our mothers, our aunties are poor. Now, let me, let, let, let me help you to understand. 7.3 million people cannot feed morning, afternoon, evening. 7.3 million people do not have access to water. 7.3 million people do not have access to health care. That is the matter. And of course, if the fundamentals are weak, 7.3 million people would expose you. Oh, how so? Not COVID, Russia and Ukraine? When, when did we move out of COVID? 2021. How many years down the line? Three years. When did Russia and Ukraine war come in? The last two years is beyond, 2022. You still monitoring it? Well, we are doing better. What has that got to do with your exchange rate moving from where it were to now hitting about 15 to 16 Ghana cities a dollar. Do Russians spend dollars? Let's, 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 let's do street economics. Let's not do the tie and see. Let's do quantum, quantum. And, and do go to Makola. Or the, the ordinary market. The ordinary market. And you would understand. And I, I keep saying this on various networks. I said that if you are not in the business of, a, of going to buy tomatoes and coming to sell, if you're not in the business of having to wake up at the end of the month and then your accountant to bring that uh, PV to you and say that, sir, this is how much wages we have to pay and how much taxes we ought to pay, you would speak English like you are speaking. <laughs> I'm speaking English. Eh? <laughs> what? What is the cost? Okay, I just What is the cost? of moving into a bank to go and take a business loan. Your business, you have a very good business desk. Ask them. It's between 35 to 45% on the average. Which business would you be able to do taking a loan of a rate of 35 to 45% when somebody else is taking it at a single digit? Now, you would take this loan and you still have issues. That is whether or not the bank would be able to have money and give to you. You will go to the ports hmm. and you are not able to pay your duties. Or your raw materials, etc. Your raw materials. What happens to you? Let us face reality. Let us fix the economy. In my view, I think that, listen, on Monday we would be launching, and I'll use the opportunity to invite you, we'll be launching the Great Transformational Plan. Who will be launching? The Movement for Change. I'll launch the and the Movement for Change. Monday. Over, Air Move and Pick. Move and Pick. At 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Listen, we, the economy as a stance needs a solution. We need practical economic prescriptions. Roland, if you are sick and you go to the hospital, you understand. 
and the doctor is talking to you the sickness in you does not understand the english language the doctor is speaking not what i'm doing here not what you're doing here what the sickness understands is the proper diagnosis that would go on mm. the proper medication that will be given you mm. not the lamentations <laughs> if we have been able to come up with policy prescriptions just as we have in the great transformational plan by alan Schumann, i think we should be able to fix this and then gradually move all of these 7.3 million people from the poverty line Roland, people are suffering Ghanaians are suffering we need a change All of those persons who were holding lectures some years back have stopped holding economic lectures. Which, which people? Apart from Dr. Baumia, who else? But, oh, okay, he was the only one. Then he stopped holding economic lectures. Yeah. Okay. What we need are solutions. And it is time for us to move into action. All right. So you Basically. say Monday, 2 p.m. Monday, 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 pick. No, I would, I would love to see you there. Yeah, we'll because be there. the GTP carries a lot of policy prescription. The GTP launch. Yeah. The Great the Transformational launch. Plan yes. launch by Alan Alan Kujo 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 and the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. Okay. It's, it's, it's so going let, to be Let me give you the last two minutes, then I'll read some messages before we wrap up. Two minutes. AGI, we have met with the MPP, mm -hmm. we've met with the NDC, yeah, the, and we've met with the mm. Afrofronto movement. Movement for Change. Yes. Okay. We've met with all three of them. We have seen some of the things that they want to do. And this transformational plan that you talk about, it was shown us at the AGI. And from my looking at it, the two parties, both MPP and NDC, mm. in as much as the communicated what they wanted to do they didn't go into detail like the movement people went i don't understand detail. you're saying you were most impressed with it's not impressed it's the kind of detail and how they looked at handling the situations we are talking about the prescription that we are in here i had i would have wished that the other two did it i mean president mahama went into detail yes but it wasn't detailed enough. Okay. It wasn't detailed enough. So I will go and I'll listen because it's of interest. Now, this particular issue we're talking about, eh, didn't happen today. Mm. Mm? It's been building up for a huge period of time mm. and it's got to a crescendo now. All right. In terms of the numbers we are looking at. You're not you're trying to tell me that during the NDC time, these particular situations weren't there. Are you trying to tell me in this fourth republic, these situations haven't been there? But based on the promises that were given us by this government, mm -hmm. because remember, the vice president was the same person who said, Ghanaians are suffering, teachers are suffering, what the government are suffering. Wasn't it part of this? It was part of this. So on those promises, at the back of those promises, Ghanaians felt these people coming in are coming to change things. What have we seen? All right. So this one is coming from Booz Foko, who says that we have to take decisions that will be good precedent for posterity. Yes, you can do business as a politician, but at the end of the day, apart from going through the right processes, Morality should guide you in the decisions you make so that you do things for the public good. Bruce Fokwa. And I have um, this one also coming from Mo Ajima, who says, the MPP communicators find it difficult to defend the government when they come up to your studio, come into your studios. That is why they haven't been sending representatives. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> You're advising me to develop a, a tough skin. I try to be careful. Um, Isaac Hughes from Takradi says, look, we have to be real. There are fundamental developmental issues confronting Ghanaians in our economy and our various communities. When we go to the markets, 
we don't go to the market with big English, and so I support Nana Sapon's view. We don't have to embellish or use English to hide anything. Now, John Agringi says, life is really difficult for the ordinary Ghanaian. You give chop money to your wife and it's difficult. I mean, politics aside, the economy is having a toll on us ordinary people. Now, I have this one from Nathaniel Akoli who says, tell Mr. Jantua to cool down. This is how we've been taken by a bunch of people over the period. Cool down, which one? On the Facebook one or... No, so you yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, I have this one also from Dr. Kofa Sekbefia. He says, I have just a simple question. Assuming that the NDC were in power and the minister acquires these hotels, how would Richard and Yagba and his team be... Or what would they be saying about it? And, well, um, Anas Nadoli Kalio says... Okay, so he sends me uh, a screenshot of the residence office for His Excellency John Ramani Mahama issued by about a um, resident reference or Safma for Deborah discussion of, uh, th I think this is a, a letter to the transition team, I believe. And so, and then says that there's been a take or the, a decision had been made in the past. So what does Samolo Kuje to Ablakwa uh, what Samu Kujito Ablakwa does not want Ghanaians to know about Snake Rock City issues and also enumerates same on many other related issues. Musa Batwa in Aswansi says, let's call a spade a spade. It is abundantly clear that anyone who develops an appetite for buying state property with impunity should not be given audience. Now, Olufemi says, why is Rock City not buying JB Dankwa or Blessed Memory Abandoned Projects? Where did Brian Echampo get the money in buying the project or even acquiring his wealth? We need to be asking key questions, you say. Sampi Yale also says, do you know the local agent of the Zipline Drone Company? There's a name in there that everybody knows. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for passing through. And um, as I enjoy your conversation as well, be coming very often. And, and of course, uh, you don't invite me. Mm -hmm. Oh, now. Just the watching you would go and buy for me to this place is a problem. <laughs> well, we're taking a break. We'll be right back.